Over the past 10 years, MS Research Australia has helped some of the world's best scientific and medical researchers add pieces to the MS puzzle. They're revealing a picture that's getting closer to completion. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Let's explore the MS journey so far, piece by piece. The immune system of people with MS becomes overactive, which causes it to attack their central nervous system. We've discovered that vitamin D seems to alter the balance of the immune system, reducing its overactivity. One group of researchers have discovered a latitude gradient in Australia and New Zealand, which indicates that you are seven times more likely to develop MS if you grew up in Tasmania compared to far north Queensland. This research indicated a link between lack of sunlight and therefore vitamin D and the development of MS. This study led to MS Research Australia launching the world's first trial of vitamin D supplementation as a preventative measure for people at risk of MS. Examining brain tissue from people with MS is crucial in advancing our scientific understanding. MS Research Australia has established a brain bank to collect tissue donations from people with MS who have passed away. Using gold standard research techniques, the brain bank facilitates cutting edge research into MS. Over 800 people have registered in MS Research Australia's brain bank program so far, and this number is expanding at a rate of 10% annually, an invaluable investment. Ten years ago, only two genes implicated in MS were known. Now, including the genes involved in vitamin D metabolism and immune system control, well over 100 genes implicated in MS have been identified. Each of these genes is now being investigated to find the exact mechanisms behind what's causing MS. The MS Longitudinal Study is a nationwide tracking study which surveys people with MS on issues of importance to them. The survey provides valuable data to lobby for changes in policy, for example, helping people with MS to maintain employment or achieving air conditioning rebates for people with MS who are much more affected by heat than the general population. Ten years ago, the only treatments for MS were injectable. Today, people with relapsing, remitting MS have ten types of treatments to choose from, including taking a daily tablet or receiving infrequent infusions. Thanks to earlier diagnosis and better management strategies, many people with MS now have a greatly increased quality of life for much longer than they would have in the past. MS Research Australia invests in research that will deliver promising new treatments and brings newly available treatments for MS to the forefront of the government's attention. MS Research Australia has an outstanding track record of funding promising young researchers. This is vital in keeping talented researchers in the field of MS research. Each year, MS Research Australia funds several incubator grants. These are one-year, $25,000 grants for outside-the-box ideas, which allow researchers to prove a principle in their research and launch a promising new line of investigation. These incubator grants provide a fantastic opportunity to obtain further funding to expand on the original project. Approximately 23,000 people in Australia live with MS. 85% of these people have relapsing, remitting MS, which means that initially they get better in between MS relapses, although over time they may reach a secondary progressive phase when their disability will gradually worsen. Approximately 15% of people with MS are diagnosed with primary progressive MS, with no periods of remission. There are currently no treatments available for the progressive form of the disease, but there is hope. MS Research Australia recently joined the International Progressive MS Alliance, a global research initiative to accelerate research into treatments for progressive MS and to ultimately achieve much better outcomes for people with this form of the disease.
Our understanding of MS through scientific and medical research has expanded exponentially over the past 10 years, but it's through further investment in MS research in Australia and international collaboration that the final pieces of this puzzle will fall into place to create a world free from MS.